Hey everybody, welcome to USA Hockey Arena in Plymouth, Michigan. It's the home of the National Team Development Program. Every year we celebrate the Military Appreciation uh, Weekend, and it just so happens we have a member of the military part of our co coaching staff. So we'd like to say hello to Tommy Kogan, uh, who's helping us this year as an assistant coach. And, and Tommy, first of all, thanks for your time. I know you're busy. Most of all, thank you for your service to our country. Thanks, Pete. Let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, your military background. Where did you serve and, and, and that kind of thing? Um, I actually just retired uh, about a week and a half ago, okay. uh, officially. I was a Marine Lieutenant Colonel. I uh, start, started out in the infantry and then I was worked in special operations for the last 15 years of service. So I ended up doing 21 years. Um, a lot of it in California and North Carolina primarily. Um, I was fortunate enough to serve Iraq, Afghanistan, Eastern Africa, all over the place. So. Uh, in Southeast Asia, so a lot of a lot of opportunities uh, been all pretty much all over the place. But uh, in talking to you, it, it seemed like you always had a hockey background, playing hockey. Uh, what got you here to uh, the National Team Development Program? Yep. So uh, I got back into hockey once my I played through college, and once my uh, I had, had to work, so I took a little bit of a break, and then once my kids started playing, I started coaching the youth youth hockey programs uh, that they played in for several years, and I've been coaching for about a decade. Um, when I, where I worked in Marine Special Operations, uh, we have a lot of high performance like uh, support there. So one of our sports psychologists that worked in my battalion, he used to work for the Buffalo Sabres as well. So he actually introduced me to Phil Housley, told him what I wanted to do. I was interested in coaching after the military career was over. And uh, Phil got me in touch with the director up here, the executive uh, director, Scott Monahan. And uh, within a week I did an interview. And did a, I was at my kids hockey camp interview from the snack bar on the phone. Yep. Uh, they f I flew up twice last season just to kind of get a, f a feel for it, and then it came up full time this season. So it's been a little, little bit chaotic, not the traditional pathway here, but uh, it's been a great experience so far. So you came here last year for a couple of weeks. Uh, what was your impressions? Somebody that maybe not, had never seen the national team development program here for a couple of weeks. What was your impressions then? The uh, quality and caliber of the players were, was outstanding. And jumping from youth hockey uh, to Going back to this level of hockey, was the speed was first couple times in the ice were like, oh my gosh, it's so fast. the guys were moving so fast, um, and the staff was great. Uh, everybody opened the doors, super inviting, and uh, just a ton of knowledge. Uh, I felt like I was getting a PhD in hockey. And I remember time. you and I having discussions yep. about Cole Eisenman, yep. among others, and uh, got a little loud at times because we both were very passionate <laughs> about uh, Cole Eisenman and some of the others, but. Yep. Uh, then you join the, the National Team Development Program this season. And, and the one thing that I've always noticed, a huge difference between the U18s and the U17s, mm -hmm. sometimes not so much on the ice, but off the ice. Yeah. Have you seen the same thing? And yep. as a coach, how do you deal with that? Uh, I have seen the same thing. I've been fortunate to work with both staffs. Uh, the first half of the year I worked with the U18s, and the second half of the year I worked with the U17s. So I got to see both sides of it. Um, I think the biggest thing for the U17s is a lot of them is the first time away from home. Even if their parents moved up here with them, it's completely different surroundings. And the guys went from being the best guy wherever they came from to now they could be the 13th forward. Uh, so a significant change in roles, responsibilities, what they're expected to do on the ice. Uh, and there's a lot of doubt, I think, that comes with that. Some self-doubt and confidence issues and things like that. And I think it takes a lot of those guys that full first year to kind of figure out where they fit in, get comfortable in their space. And then by the 18 year, they start, they're getting bigger, stronger, faster. Uh, they fit in and they, they take off. I think you'd see in a lot of the records over, over right. time. So as a coach, how do you help them in that U17 year? Uh, in the U17 year, we actually do a lot of stuff off ice. Um, we talk about habits, priorities, and we do a lot of other uh, off ice techniques, like whether it's breathing, progressive muscle relaxation, meditation, different things like that to help them kind of refocus, figure out what's important and, and adjust and then move forward. So we, we've done several classes like that off ice, trying to just get the kids to maximize their performance and, and understand where they fit in. So you've had a, a military background. I looked at uh, your, your bio, Harvard Business School, Naval uh, Postgraduate School, USA ho Hockey Level certified as a coach. How does all that experience help you here? It just gives you a different perspective. I think uh, every place I've worked at or been, uh, I've been fortunate and I've been in charge of lots of people. Uh, and all over the world in a lot of different environments. So, and each thing's a little different. Every person's a little different. I think as, as a leader, whether it's a coach or in the military, like you just have to adapt to 
to facilitate the people that work with you and to get them to perform their best. So uh, just being at those different places, I think, just gave me perspective that, that's useful. So you had a great word there, adapt. So you're a, you're a leader of men in the military. Here, you're a leader of uh, young men learning to grow up as men. How do you tailor that approach? I think uh, you, you, you have to set conditions to get those guys to perform at their best. And I think every single guy, whether they're, having a good, they're excelling or they're struggling, uh, they all show up, they want to do their best every day. Uh, they want to perform, they want to, they want to be the best they can. You just have to find pathways for each guy. So it's just, whether it's a video session with them or if it's an off ice thing, or you just maybe some techniques on ice, we can make those adaptions and, and get them to perform their best. That's the goal. It's constantly evolving and uh, just yeah, constant involvement and constant learning. One thing that I love about this uh, level of, of hockey, the enthusiasm, could be the players and U18s are going out for practice right now, yep. could be talking to you or any of the coaches. The enthusiasm is palatable. I love that. Do you feel the same? Yep, love it. Love being here. Uh, and the coaches in the bullpen in there, uh, myself and the other assistant coaches, it's always every morning high energy starts out in the gym usually and falls in the office, uh, practice plan, and then right on the ice. The, across the board, it's uh, everybody in here. Uh, everybody loves the game. Everybody wants to be here. Everybody wants to see the kids succeed. So it's, it's a lot of fun environment to be in. So back to your military background, did you feel the same enthusiasm at times? when you're in the military. I did, especially in a special operations world. Uh, I think there's a high level of drive for the individuals that, that were in that community uh, at all times. They want to be there, they want to be the best. So it's, they're already self-motivated. Now you just got to find ways to make them, help them exceed, excel. So you've made the transition from military to hockey coach. Mm -hmm. What's in the future for Tommy uh, Kogan? Well, right now, uh, finish out the season, hopefully finish out pretty strong. Guys just got a couple of W's this weekend, which is good. Um, Next year, I think right now, the plan is to come back here, but uh, just keep driving forward and, and you know, just keep climbing. So we have this military appreciation weekend and there's gonna be a lot of military groups around here. What would you say to them? Well, thanks, thanks for doing what you do. I uh, appreciate it. Um, I walked in those shoes and I understand what it takes, uh, but thank you for what you're doing and enable me to do something like this now. So it's Tommy Kogan, thanks for your time. Again, thanks for your service, and uh, it's been a pleasure talking with you either about Cole Eisman or anybody else. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Thanks, Grover. Appreciate it.